All right, so the final massive event of the year for most players is the Paris Masters, and it's coming up this week. It's a 1,000 event. There's a lot of points on the line. A lot of players trying to qualify for Turin. There's four spots left, and there's about six players or so that could qualify. So it's going to be a very interesting event. Let's go see who's not playing, though, because there are some massive withdrawals from this event. Okay, so big withdrawal. Novak Djokovic deciding not to play this tournament, which does put him in a bit of a limbo for the A to B finals. And Sebastian Corda also not playing this event. He decided to get surgery on the wrist to be ready for next year. So he's not going to be playing at uh, this tournament either. But let's get the top of the draw because we do have some crazy early matchups. All right, so it's a smaller event than we're used to seeing at this stage with the 1,000 event being uh, 56 players, which means 16 uh, seeds and eight top eight seeds gets a buy in the first round. Starting with Yannick Sinner, he gets a buy in the first round. He'll take on the winner of Shelton or Felix Ogelia-Sim in the second round. That is a crazy start to the event for Yannick Sinner. Shelton's in form, FAA indoor courts. He knows how to play. That's a very fun start. Uh, then you've got a qualified taking on Bublik. Winner of that will take on either Anaudi or the number 13 seed. Runa in the second round. Then you've got the number nine seed, Dimonor taking on Navone. Winner of that will take on either Baez or a qualifier in the second round. Then you've got Draper taking on Lehechka. Winner of that will take on the number five seed, Taylor Fritz in the second round. This is a fun section. I think there's some there's some tough matches for Sinner there, but I don't think it's impossible for Sinner. I think Sinner should make it out of this, but at least it's an interesting draw, right? We've used to seeing some of the top players get a walkthrough basically to the semis, but this is not that for Sinner. So obviously you got to watch out for Sinner. You've got to watch out for Fritz as well. He is nearly qualified for the ATP finals, and by the time this tournament starts, he probably, he might be qualified. Demonor, he's trying to qualify. He needs to have a good week this week, so definitely got to watch out for him. And also Runa, he's having a pretty good week this week in Basel. But also watch out for Shelton. He's having a great week in Basel as well. Just beat Rublev, but I think his first top 10 win or second top 10 win of the year. And also Draper, definitely got to watch out for him as well. Very dangerous. And because we've got less seeds here, there's some really crazy unseeded players. And Draper is one of those that nobody wants to play early, but Fritz is probably going to have to play him uh, if he does get that win there, Draper. All right, next section of the draw, we've got the number three seeds, Vero gets by in the first round. He'll take on the winner of the Deary or Greek Spore in the second round. Then you got Feast versus Chilich. Circle that as a match to watch in the first round. Totally different generations collide. Winner of that match will take on either Struff or the number 16 seed Musetti in the second round. Then you got the number 10 seed City Pass taking on a qualifier. Winner of that will take on either Borges or Tabilo in the second round. Then you got another qualifier taking on Sarundalo. Winner of that will take on the number six seed Rublev in the second round. Very interesting draw. I don't know who's getting out of this draw, but it is a very interesting draw. Of course, you've got to watch out for the seeds in this one. You've got to watch out for Zvera. You've got to watch out for Rublev. You've got to watch out for City Pass and you've got to watch out for Musetti. Setti, but you've also got to watch out for Feast. He is the scary unseated player in this section for sure. Playing really well on the indoor courts in Basel. He just beat City Pass. Uh, also, we've just seen Musetti and Zvera play each other and Musetti getting the win there. So this section is probably the most stacked section and who knows who comes out of this one because it's very, very dangerous for all the seeds. Uh, but remember this section in the semifinals will take on the Sinner section. So we could be getting Sinner versus Zvera. If you want to go by the big names, maybe Sinner versus Rublev. If Rublev can come good, maybe Sinner versus City Pass. If City Pass can get on a run and make the semis like he did last year. Maybe even Sinner versus Musetti. If uh, you want an all-Italian clash, if you think that Sinner's not going to make it somehow, maybe you want to go with Zverev taking on Fritz, which we've seen a lot lately. Maybe you want to go with Zverev versus Demonor in the semis. Maybe Rublev versus Demonor or Rublev versus Fritz. Or maybe if you want to go something really random, which maybe Musetti versus Runa. Or maybe Feast versus Shelton if you want to go something out of the box, unseeded players. Bottom half of the draw now, you've got the number eight seed Dimitrov. He gets a buy in the first round. He'll take on the winner of Echeverry or Zhong in the, in the second round. Then you've got Mahash taking on Rindanish. Winner of that will take on either Mickelson or the number 12 seed Hercatch in the second round. Then you got the number 14 seed Tiafo taking on Piracar. Very tough match for Big Foe, especially against a Frenchman with the big power of, of uh, Piracar in France. That's going to be dangerous. Winner of that match will take on either Hashinov or Carino Buster in the second round. Then you got Poprin taking on Berrettini. Winner of that match will take on the number 4 seed Mevedev in the second round. That is a tough match for Mevedev. Tough draw for Mevedev, really. Very dangerous, especially because Mevedev doesn't like playing in Paris. Not just on clay, he just doesnn't vibe with the crowd. And he just, he's, the only time he won this tournament was when there was no crowds because of COVID. So really interested to see how many copes this week. But uh, of course, you got to watch out for Medvedev. You've got to watch out for Dimitrov. Dimitrov trying to qualify for the ADB finals. Uh, you got to watch out for Tiafo and her catch as well. Both trying to, uh, an outside chance of qualifying. But if they do win this tournament, they put their hands up for that. So yeah, so they're the big ones. But I'd also watch about Hashinov. Has been very good on the indoor courts the last couple of weeks. And also Berrettini. Very dangerous player, especially for Medvedev in that second round if they were to meet. Bottom section of the draw now, you've got number seven seed Rude. He gets by in the first round. He'll take on the winner of Thompson or a qualifier in the second round. Very tough start for Rude, especially because he is trying to qualify for the AGP finals. He needs to have a good week. Then you've got Caboli taking on Gasquet. Winner of that will take on either Manorino or the number 11 seed Paul in the second round. Then you've got Umber taking on Nakashima. Winner of that will take on a qualifier because we've got two qualities going at it in that first round. Then you've got Jerry taking on another qualifier. Winner of that will take on the number two seed Alcaraz in the second round. A weird draw because 
Alcaraz is the standout. He's got a lot of qualifiers in this section, which is great. But Paul and Umber are not to be is not to not to be overlooked because both of them are very dangerous for Alcaraz, right? Tommy Paul, we know what he can do against Alcaraz. But you gotta watch out for Alcaraz. You gotta watch out for Paul. You gotta watch out for Umber. I'd be watching out for Rude, but not as a threat, more as a can he qualify for the ADP final? So keeping an eye on Rude against Thompson in that second round. I mean, that's a dangerous second round. Thompson did beat Rude earlier in the year. Um, and I'd also watch out for Nakashima. Very dangerous player. Has proven himself over the last couple of weeks to be very dangerous for the seeds. So maybe Umber doesn't get through that first round and maybe it's going to be Nakashima Alcaraz in that third round instead. Of course, this section of the draw will take on the Medvedev section. So we could be getting Alcaraz versus Medvedev in the semifinals. We could be getting Alcaraz versus Dimitrov in the semis. Maybe Alcaraz versus Tiafo or Alcaraz versus Hercatch potentially. Maybe you don't think Alcaraz is going to make it. Maybe you want to go with Medvedev taking on Tommy Paul. Maybe you want to go with Medvedev versus Umber. Maybe you want to go with something a little bit different. Maybe you want to throw Nakashima in there against uh, Hercatch. Man, that is, it's a very interesting draw in Paris. And there's a lot at stake. Not so much for the top players. The top four are fine. They're already in the ADB finals. But the players that are outside the top four are all playing for those final four spots. And also, they're, everyone's playing for form to get to the ADB finals with some, some confidence, you know? So it's going to be very interesting. One week masters. We don't get these much anymore. So it's going to be very fun to watch. From the first round onwards, we're getting like banger matches from the day one. Who's going to win this tournament though? Sinners the obvious pick. Uh, it's very and Medvedev. I mean, they're outsiders. Uh, Alcaraz, I mean, his indoor record is, needs to be improved. Maybe he can do that here. Maybe he can start to be an indoor player to, in Paris. Or maybe you want to go with someone outside because sometimes the Paris Masters throws up those kind of surprises uh, as we've seen over the years with Runa, who was unseated two years ago, Hashinov, Sok, just to name a couple. But man, Paris is going to be crazy. One week left of the season or at least one big week left of the season. Who's going to win it?